After Donald Trump won the presidential election last night, Dana White made a speech. Fans have been trolling Dana. This video is going around X. It says, why did Dana White just say this at Trump's victory speech? Obviously this is edited and Dana did not say this. As an educated adult who knows the fight business, you cannot deny that while John Jones is active, he is the greatest fighter in the world. Bryce Mitchell reveals he spoke to Dana White and has a fight announcement coming soon. Hey, I got a Christmas gift for y'all. Let me tell you. Actually, no, no, no. I can't tell you exactly, okay? I can't tell you who, I can't tell you where, I can't tell you when, but I talked to the boss today. I got one coming, okay? Y'all are gonna love this matchup. You can put in the comments who you think it's gonna be, when you think it's gonna be, but I can't announce it yet. UFC's gonna announce that, you know, that the boss does all that stuff. I'm just telling y'all, you got something to look forward to. So God bless y'all and thank you for having my back. Thank you for being patient. It's been about a year and I'm so ready to put on a show for y'all. Thank you. While wearing a bunny costume, Alex Pajeda drops a Brazilian YouTuber with a body shot. Yeah, yeah, she's... Uh-huh. Tá bom, vamos embora. Ah, filha da... Os caras são muito filha da puta. Olha aqui. Ai, tá aí. Tá bom, fio, chega com 50 mesmo. Bora. Drikas Duplessy mocked Sean Strickland today. Drikas posted this old clip of Sean crying on Theo Von's podcast. It says her, my cat died, me trying to smash. Drikas added laughing crying face emojis. Oh, Six <sighs> seconds. I can just sit here. We can just nah, sit here. Nah, it's all good. You six seconds. I just process it. Jorge Masvidal had some words for Colby Covington today. Colby posted this video to X yesterday. It's fight day. It's election day. Make sure you all get out to vote. We know there's going to be a red wave when all the Republicans get off work. So make sure you stay in line, protect the vote, because this is the most important election of our lifetime. Because a vote for Trump means world peace, lower inflation, and secure borders. Kamala broke it, now Trump will fix it. Jorge responded to that video. He wrote, shut your ass up, undercover Harris supporter. Michael Chandler plans to steal the show from John Jones at UFC 310. Chandler is fighting Charles Oliveira in the co-main event. Speaking to the New York Post, Chandler said it's a huge blessing to be considered for the Madison Square Garden card. They don't just throw anybody on the Madison Square Garden card. The UFC puts guys and gals on the fight card that are going to put on a great show. I saw John Jones at UFC 306 at the Sphere. We said hi, took a picture together. You know the main and co-main and he's like, hey man, make sure you save some excitement for me because I'm the main event. And I'm like, yeah, probably not, man. I'm coming to steal the show. Having that much time off, I needed it. I really needed it. Six training camps in a 26 month period. Every single fight was do or die. Top three, top five guys, world title fights, fights of the night, fights of the year. And I love the sport. I am so blessed to do the sport of mixed martial arts as a professional and get paid for it and feed my family with it. But it was taking a toll on me. I needed some time off. On the rematch with Charles, Chandler continued, I just wasn't where I needed to be. I went in there very confident. I put in a great training camp, but I went out there to try to kill Charles Oliveira in the first second of the first round. 10 aided him in the first round, and I just wasn't able to keep that pace. I made a bad decision, put myself in some bad spots. I wasn't fighting to the best of my ability, and I've since fixed all of those things, mainly mentally and spiritually, and I just think it's going to be a masterful performance. I think I'm going to surgically and systematically break this man down until he looks for the exit sign. Kayla Harrison is open to fighting Juliana Pena, Raquel Pennington, and Amanda Nunes next. On the Overdogs podcast, Kayla says that she just wants to fight them all. Yeah, I mean, I think she won. I think that, like, you gotta go out and f take the title, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't, you don't steal it. I think you gotta go out and, like, put on a dominant performance if it's gonna go into a decision. I think it was wicked close, though. It could go either way. It's tough. Tough to call. What I don't care who I fight. Like, I think that, I think Juliana, Juliana and I sell more t tickets. Like, we're gonna be a more exciting fight because she's got a yapper and I'm not afraid to yap as well. Um, but I just want the title. Like, I don't, 
I want the title. I want to fight them both, you know? Like, I'll go take the title from Juliana, or if she doesn't want to fight me, then I'll have an interim title with Raquel, and then I'll fight Juliana, or I'll fight Juliana, then I'll fight Raquel, or I'll fight Juliana, then I'll fight Amanda, then I'll fight Raquel. Like, I want to fight them all. I want to solidify myself as the greatest. Um, I got a lot of shit I want to do in the UFC and not a lot of time, so let's keep lining them up. Tyron Woodley believes Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul is a very even fight. Speaking of TMZ Sports, Tyron said it's a very even fight to be honest. It's even because of the age of Mike Tyson. I think it's an even fight because of the age of Mike Tyson. He's completely obviously out of his prime. When in his prime, most of his fights were almost attempted murder. So literally, Jake wouldn't have stood a chance. Nobody would even commission to sanction a fight against him and Mike Tyson in Tyson's prime. Jake's always in a win-win situation. He's fighting guys that if he loses, you lost to this guy, you lost to Tyron, you lost to Anderson Silva, you lost to Nate Diaz or whatever. So he's always in a position where if he wins, he goes up. If he loses, it's like, okay, he took a risk, he took a chance. I like the fight, I'll be at the fight. Michael Bisping thinks people are underestimating Stipe Miocic ahead of UFC 309. Bisping explains how all this time off could be a good thing for Stipe. Stipe's last fight was a second round knockout loss to Francis Ngannou back in March of 2021. He says that it might be. It all depends. It all depends. Listen, if he goes out there and beats John Jones and does it in spectacular fashion, then he might stick around. Because guess what? Millions of dollars is a hell of an incentive. It's hell of a motivation. You know what I mean? Listen, he loves being a fireman. He's made millions of dollars already. But when you can cash in, when you beat John Jones, and there'll be a lot of people watching that, if he gets pay-per-view points on that, he wins, he becomes undisputed champion. And then it's Tom Aspinall versus Stipe. And it's not like Stipe is a You know what I mean? It's not like Stipe is gonna be like, you know, oh, no, I don't wanna fight this guy. You know what I mean? The man's one of the baddest men on the planet. I think people look at Stipe's last fight against Francis Ngannou because that was the last time that he fought and it was a great knockout for Francis. I think people are underestimating him in this fight, you know, and, and I can understand that because I always say you're only as good as your last performance, right? Stipe, he got flatlined. It was a devastating knockout. He was led back. The knee was all kind of bent in weird places. That's Francis Ngannou, man. That's what he does. And they're one-on-one -on -one apiece, by the way. He said that one just kind of got away the third match. Um, but what I'm saying is based upon that, I think people are forgetting. Yeah, he's older, but he's also had three and a half years away, which in hindsight is a great thing to recover from the knockout, to take time away from the sport, to come back hungry, fully motivated, push yourself in training camp. The hardest part is when you're a fighter and you're doing camp after camp, after camp, you get burned out. You're just sick of it. You're like, why am I doing this again? But Stipe is at three and a half years away. And granted, <laughs> granted he was ready for a fight a year ago. And then so he's been delayed even further. So I think we're gonna see Stipe looking very, very good. John Jones posted some new training footage ahead of UFC 309. <laughs> Currently, a rumor going around that Michael Chandler versus Charles Oliveira is in jeopardy. On X, multiple accounts have posted that Charles may be injured and the UFC is looking for a replacement opponent. Now, this is not at all confirmed. At the moment, the fight is still on. However, Hanato Moikano offered to step in on short notice if these rumors are true. On X, Hanato posted this. He wrote, Chandler or Charles out? Call me, I fight in 10 days. Time is money. Dustin Poirier also reacted to these rumors. On X, he wrote, Charles really out versus Muscle Milk Mike? Charles Oliveira has responded. He reposted this, saying that him versus Chandler was in jeopardy. Charles added a thinking face emoji. Dustin Poirier responded to Charles. He wrote, I'm in. Ariel Hawani gave his thoughts on this matter. On the Ariel Hawani show today, he says that based on the conversations he's had, Oliveira versus Chandler is not in jeopardy. Based on the conversations that I've had, uh, the fight is not in jeopardy. Uh, I don't know if there's smoke to the fire. Right now, I reached out to Chandler's team and was told news to them. 
I uh, reached out to a couple people and they said news to them. Now, typically when something like this happens, there does seem to be smoke to the fire, unless it's one of the, the crazy, you know, fake, you know, Twitter things. But as of right this moment, I have not heard that the fight is off. You know, if it would be off, this would be devastating, obviously for Michael Chandler in particular, because he's waited so long. It'll be two years since his last fight, the McGregor saga, all that. And then some, hopefully, it doesn't happen. I don't know how Dustin Poirier would jump in on a week's notice. Um, I don't doubt that he would want to, but would that be smart? I don't know. But as of right now, it does not seem... Let me just check my phone here. It does not seem like it is in jeopardy. I don't know where this originated. Does anyone know? I saw like a couple of accounts here or there, but nothing really... It didn't seem like anything really concrete or, or reputable reporting this, right? Anyone see anything? I didn't see any any specific reporting. What I did see was the fighters reacting, which, to your point, sometimes, you know, that smoke does become fire on that, right? And the, the energy around that tends to turn into something. But, no, I, I've not seen anything on the reporting end. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's in reference to the fan that disrespected Daniel Cormier at the UFC Q&A. It's from Outdoor Adventure 231. It says, I hate these people that talk tough to fighters on the mic. Show some respect. This is getting out of hand. The second one says this dude would have been scared shitless if DC came down and beat him in the crowd. The final one's from Stone Cold Steve Owens. It says Sean Strickland and his opinions are irrelevant. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.